Hi everybody, I hope uh, you all are okay today and all's going well in your world. I am here again. It is Tuesday and we had a long weekend. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to come in. I'm going to adjust my screen so that I'm not looking in the ceiling at you, maybe. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk quilting and BES4. That is the plan. Um, hopefully you guys will get a few ideas on what you can do i decided today tuesdays must be blue day because evidently i wore this same shirt last week it must get in its rotation on tuesdays hi tammy good to see you guys hi sharon um amanda you can't hear me can everybody else hear me because my sound should be on Oh, am I back? <laughs> Can y'all see? Are we good? Um, okay, good deal. I was kind of freaking out there. My camera just went whoop, and it's gone. So um, let's talk a little bit about BES4. I think I heard my husband pop in. Yay, raw. <laughs> it's kind of one of those weeks. All right, so um, we're going to talk about quilting, and I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to talk about um, as we go through it. So let me share my screen. There we go. Okay, so you guys can see my flower here. Yes. Um, this is a flower from BES4. Now, you could have obviously brought it in from anywhere else, but we've added a decorative background. And if I turn off the flower elements, you will see, I have to do it on my screen here, you will see that underneath the flower, there is no decorative fill. Okay. So, hopefully this will work for most everything, but one of the things that you're going to do is that you are going to draw a square with a decorative fill. And the reason I tell you to do that first is because you have to choose your decorative fill first. You can add in your pattern and that's perfectly fine, but then you'll have to cut the pattern out because otherwise it deletes the um, overlaps from the pattern. So let's, let's try and play with this here for a second. I'm going to touch new page and we're going to get starting get started I guess I can say so let's go to our home screen um all right hi Diane glad you found us hello from Cordova um Amanda I don't know what's going on with yours I think my system is good now Diane can you see and hear me now hopefully you can hi guys from sunny Ohio it's hot and sunny there today wow all right let's get started um, I'm going to go over here and we're going to choose add design and I'm going to start talking a little bit slower so that I don't speed talk today. You have different designs that you can add. Today we're going to just add a design from the designs character category. As I've said before, some of these are really, really nice. They are more intricate characters than you'll find at designs elsewhere in the program. So just kind of scroll through and see if there's something that you like in particular. I am going to click on that one. And then I'm going to left click to insert it onto my design page. Okay. So if I scroll out, that shows you my flower. I'm going to select a hoop 
And the reason I'm selecting my hoop today that I don't normally do is I want to know how big I need to make my square or rectangle for my quilting, right? Since I'm going to do this in the hoop. So I'm going to select my 200 by 200, which is my eight by eight quilt frame. And we're going to touch OK. All right. So now my design is in the center because I added that hoop afterwards. Remember, if you turn on your hoop, it automatically centers your design for you. That's kind of a neat little trick, just so you know. On your tools tab, everybody can do this. We could either draw in a um, applique that's a square, but the edges are rounded off and I didn't want to do that. So it's just as easy to use my line drawing tool and hold my shift key down to make draw a straight line, left click in the corners of my hoop here. And then when I get to the last corner, say close my shape. Now I can select that shape. Now, Karen, I'm not limited to the designs and the software I can bring out in outside designs. That's never been a limitation of this particular software. We're going to say convert to decorative fill. All right. This time, you know, last time I told you that I that I usually don't put a anything besides a steel stitch around the outside edge of these decorative fills. But when I'm quilting, I actually want an outline stitch around the outside edge of it so that it finishes it off and gives me something to align to cut with. OK, so I'm going to leave that at a run and touch OK. And there you go. So let's change that color so you guys can see it. There's me a nice pink decorative fill. If you want to change your decorative fill, go over to your properties window. Click on the drop down menu and start scrolling through the, the decorative fill designs. When you find one that you like, click on it and click apply. Now, depending on the angle that you put something at the decorative fills at will give you different looks. So if I change the angle of this decorative fill to say 45 degrees and apply it, it'll give me a different look. So don't forget to try, test those out and try those little things out because they're kind of fun. Let's see if we like Topsy. And Topsy's going to come in at 45 degrees. So if I want to change it back to zero, I can come and check zero. Um, Heidi, I went to my tools tab and I chose convert to decorative fill is where I got my decorative fills. So let me come back over here again and let's pick a different one. There's one in here that's really fun. I think it's insiders. Because depending on the angle of this one, you get some really unique looks. Every time I change this one, I get a different different style. That's not it, though. That's not the one I'm thinking of. Let's see if it's artsy. With these decorative fills, you can make them larger, but I would not suggest that you make them smaller. And I'm going to show you why. It is the way these stitches were created. So if we're going to zoom in on one stitch. Everybody see that one stitch there? Let's go to our view tab and let's turn on our stitch points. Do you see how you've got your stitch points at a set distance on these? If I select that and let's come over here and let's see, I make this smaller, make my pattern size five millimeters. And I apply. You will notice that my stitch points just cram together more. They don't necessarily, they don't lengthen. And even if I change my stitch length over here to say five millimeters, they are still going to be too tight. And it, that basically just pounds sand. It just creates holes in things, places that you don't want it to be. So that's why I like to show you that little thing tip that decorative fills are fine to be larger but you do not want them smaller. OK, so anything over 12 millimeters is fine. And 12 was what it was set at. So if I wanted it to be 20 millimeters, that's perfectly fine. But I don't want to go smaller. OK. All right. So I've got some questions before I go on to the next part. I'm going to come over here and answer those questions for you. So give me just a second. 
All right, let's see what we've got here. Um, I, Karen, I am not limited to the, to the designs that are in the software. I can bring in my own. I would bring those, I can open it or merge it. I usually merge or use my browser window to bring those in. And the reason I say I usually open or merge is because I like to be able to um, be reminded to save instead of save over the original file. That, that makes it to where I can do that. Um, yes, the colors of the fields can be changed. All you have to do is click on the section that you want to change and then click on a color tile to change that color. I think I did that immediately. And candy. If you do a decorative fill first, can your design come in after where to use the stitches? Oh, certainly, certainly. Um, I mean, you can reorder it. I just wanted to bring in my design first, so I kind of had an idea as to what I wanted as my decorative fill. You can play with things all day long. Hi, Sue. Good to see you. All right, guys. So I'm going to switch back over to software here. Now, we have our decorative fill and we have our design. Yes, Regina, this is only with Power Pack 1 that you can do this. You have to, in order to do the decorative fills, it's a Power Pack 1 thing. All right. So I've got my, I want to come in and I want to grab my original design. So that would be those first sections, everything besides the red, correct? All right. And then we're going to go to our tools tab. And if you were with me last week, you heard me talk about nap control. Nap control has many uses and this is a biggie for it. If I touch nap control and I take that down to zero to where it's not going any further away. We don't want a big offset around it. This time I don't necessarily need an offset a finishing run. All I want to do is have a space to be able to get rid of that underneath the stuff that's underneath it. So I am going to take, you, you should see there's my nap control. I'm going to take all of these parts of the original flower and we're going to have them so last right now. I want to say move to last. My other option would be to cut out the original flower and you could do that if you want. But really all I needed it to do was to sew last. I think I could make a could have a mess up. But um, I'm not sure but we'll see. I, I didn't try this before I try before you get started. Today's been a crazy day. So my nap control is this one right here. I'm going to right mouse click on it and we are going to choose remove overlapped stitches. Hopefully it won't take away my flower, but if it does, I'll just undo and we'll, I'll show you how to do it without doing that. I took my overlap down to zero because I don't, I want it to be snugged right up against my decorative fill. I don't want any feathering basically. So let's see here, I, while that we're waiting on that to process, which it did, sweet. Okay, so let me turn off the, basically I'm gonna turn off my eyeballs for everything. Did I get them all? Oh, there we go. So everything except for the nap control and the decorative filler turned off. I'm going to delete my nap control and you can see that the gap has been made there. That way, when it goes to stitch that decorative fill to quilt for you, it will not run over, run underneath the, your flower. Okay, I'm going to flip over to answer questions here. <clears throat> um, Carol, how do you run watch reruns? This is it, it'll be living on my Facebook page and right now it lives on Brothers as well since they are sharing our live broadcasts. Okay. Now that is that's how you use your decorative fills to create a background basically for quilting. Uh, there are other things that you can do that you might enjoy doing. So I'm going to flip back over to software. And we're going to delete that decorative fill if I can get it onto my screen. There we go. 
So I'm back to my basic flower. Y'all want to see something off of my computer is, is what I'm gathering. So, hmm, let's see. I don't have a ton of design. So hold on just a second. I don't, I don't buy a lot of designs. I tend to make my own. So, or use what was in the software. So let me see. What do we have here? We're going to go up to our paste setter button and I'm going to choose the browser button. This will allow me to view what I've got on my computer. Oh, I forgot. I've got these bonus designs that I got from somewhere. Um, and we have accents. We have animals. These are a bunch of stuff. A lot of these are in the software. Let's go to quilting and see what we have. So here we go. Here are some quilting designs. Now, you could take these and I, we're going to try and play this and we're going to merge that one in. You could turn these into a quilting design if you want to think about this. Um, on your tools tab, you have an arrange tool. This is one of my favorite tools. Depending on the size hoop that you're planning on using, you can arrange it on hoop, on rows, on corners, and you can scatter things. For this one, you could do either rows or corners. I'm going to do rows. And you can tell, tell it how many across you want and how many down. Look there. When I touch apply and say OK, you have a hoop full of, of a quilt design. So that's a super simple one to do. You also have built in when you go to add, add designs and if you choose um, backgrounds, these are some little decorative elements that you can use to create, create your own background decorative quilting designs and this does not require a power pack. So for those of you asking me about a power pack, this does not require the power pack. You go to your tools tab this time you arrange on rows. And you tell it how many across you want. I want it eight inches across basically and no space between them. We want however many down. I'm a little bit big for eight, but we're good. So we're going to click OK. And there you go. Now to fit it into your hoop, this one you can do hoop fit to hoop. What will not happen with this, since it's running stitches, if you bring in a design, it will not um, remove the overlap for you because it is running stitches and it's not seeing that as going to be a major issue. So if I merge and let's say I merge in, find something else. What have I got? Not a whole lot, guys. These are my commercial embroidery, de embroidery designs, and I don't have a ton. Let's see. Nope. What have I got? Okay, so here's a steampunk design. Let's say we want this one. We'll open it up. You could then grab it, go to your arrange tab and choose center to make sure it's in the center of the design. We can we can try with the nap control and see if it works for us, but I don't think it's going to work. We'll try it. Nap control. Zero. OK. And then right mouse click, remove overlapped stitches. We don't want any overlap remaining. We're going to say OK. Oh, wow, it did it, guys. It surprised me. I didn't think it would do it for us. So now we can remove the nap control. And let's show you how that worked. It removed that overlap out from underneath it. So I'm excited. I didn't think it would work for me. So um, let me come back and answer some questions. Hello, where'd it go? Finding my mouse on this screen can be a challenge. Nap control and removing overlaps is in my book, Karen, but how to do it quilting wise. No, I did not get there. That's the purpose of the Facebook group that goes along with the with the book 
is to basically expand, expand upon things that I didn't do. How to arrange things on rows is definitely there. How to do all of the arrangement tools. But I truly did not think that it would remove that overlap on those running stitch designs. And the fact that it did, I would, I'm, that's the bomb. Um, so, you know, you never know until you try. And that's one of the things that I really want to encourage you guys to do is always try. So don't assume that it won't work because if you assume that it's not going to work, it, you basically have, um, you, you've self-fulfilled that prophecy, prophecy. You didn't try it. So it won't work if you don't try it. You have to give it a chance. You have to give that opportunity for you to be able to, to do it. Basically, see it. it. The worst thing that can happen is that it doesn't work and you have to try something else. So that's one of those things that I, I really like for you guys to play around with stuff and see if it will work for you. Um, so glad you all made it, Cherry. Uh, good. Yes, reruns are a wonderful thing. So from the UK, I'm sorry that you can't get BES there. Um, maybe you have an American friend that well, can't get it for you. It is a US product. It is sold some in Canada, but um, you know, it, it's, it is a US product. So that unfortunately, but glad you could join us today. Um, there's always things that are from one software that may apply to another one. So remove overlaps is definitely in PE design, which they do have in the, in the United Kingdom. So um, it would do the same basic thing, except for remove overlaps in PE design works with things that are built that you create yourself or things that you've converted to blocks or to outlines. Okay. Uh, yes, Terry, we learn more by trial and error. If yeah, if I don't try it on that, won't know if it worked or not. So my goal is to always test and punch the buttons and see what else we can do. Um, other things that you can do. So that that really is the quilting aspect here today. You could, if you have a um, long arm quilting machine, you can save anything out that's a running stitch. You can do save as, and we do have the quilting formats. So not just embroidery formats are here. If you look down towards the bottom, you've got CompuQuilter, HQ, ProQuilter, IntelliQuilter. Most of the quilting formats are in here. So don't assume that you can't use it. it those are kind of fun. All right, so let's see here. Let me come back and answer some questions. Oops, I did not show you my screen on that one, did I? Oops, you know, two screens is a little bit more than I can handle today, evidently. I good thing it's live, right? <laughs> okay, quilting formats, save as. Let's see what we can do here. So if I come and I scroll down, here are your quilting formats. So you've got um, CQP, HQF, IQP. These are your quilting formats down here towards the bottom. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Let me come back and answer the question that I see that popped up on that. Let's see here. Um, Terry. Uh, no, P Design 11 doesn't have the quilting formats. It, it's um, that's a BES thing. Let's see here, Diane. You have embroidery patterns that you do around a quilt. Have I ever used the magnetic hoops? Yes, I have used magnetic hoops. Um, great for some things, not great for other things. So you have to determine what you like. That's not a product that I represent anymore. But um, for quilting, magnetic frames can be very nice because you just lift and go. Okay. Um, Let's come back over to software. Any other questions before I go? Nope. Okay. All right, guys, let's hit new and see what we can do here. Um, I'm going to put us in a hoop again. And we are going to talk about bringing in other things. So, if you have, when you import, if you have a, a um, I hit, meant the wrong, hit the wrong button there, import, and I'm going to choose import artwork. 
and I'm going to choose an FCM file. So let's say I wanted to do an anchor and I wanted that as my quilting design. So this is an FCM fabric cutting machine format, right? Make it the size that you want it to be. I'm actually going to take out the dot in the center of it because I don't think that will quilt very well. So let me turn off that comment so you guys can see what I'm doing. If I right mouse click on this, I can hit my edit shape tool. I can right mouse click on it and I can choose delete hole. Okay, that gets rid of the hole in the center. If with Power Pack 1, if I under, undo that, not Power Pack 1, Power Pack 2, if I break it apart, I can then just hit the delete on the keyboard. But if you don't have a Power Pack, if you go to your Edit Shape tool, right mouse click on an edit point, you can then delete that point. Now we're going to go to our Tools tab. And we're going to choose Convert to Run. So that converts it to a running stitch and I want to make sure it's a single run because it's going to be a quilting design. You can make the stitches longer or sh shorter. That's up to you. You could also futz with that and make it pretty. I'm not going to worry about it so much today. But once again, to turn that into a quilting design, you would arrange that on rows. Now you can flip these. So if you choose flip every one, horizontally, let's say we want to flip them vertically. And then you could come in and you could change the distance between them to where you tighten them up and you get a totally different looking design. Okay. Then you come in and increase the number across, increase your number down, whatever you want to do. And now up to about a six by six. There I'm at a seven by almost seven by seven. Let's click OK. And then you can go to your home tab, hoop fit to hoop. You now have a quilting design that's ready for you to stitch out underneath whatever you want to do. So <clears throat> that is how you make your own. OK, so those are those are easy ones to do. So let me see here. Um, Let's go up here to so sorry. I don't know if you're following my page. You should be able to get in here and get on them. I don't know if you're doing it on brother's page. I don't know what the happen. What happens with that rain? You can do that with an SVG file if you have power pack one or power pack two. OK. Uh, Stitch Express. It is made by the same company that makes Stitch Express for Brother. It is not the same as Stitch Express. This has more capability. Stitch Express is more of an auto digitizing program, which BES doesn't have. So that is a nice little companion piece. But um, BES has more text, more lettering, more features in it than Stitch Express does, Timothy. So, all right, let me get back over and take off that comment. And let's see here. Before I go on, do any of the power packs one, two or three add any features to the applique process in basic BES4? Yes, they do. Um, power pack one would be the one that would add the most to it because that gives you um, the capability of bringing in SVG files to be able to do applique. Other than that, no. So where did I get the quilting designs? Those quilting, I'm not sure which ones, the ones that I just created or the one that um, I brought in from when I merged. The one that I merged, I brought in, it was from the Luminaire 2500 free designs pack that came with the Luminaire. Where do you get the software? The software you get from a local brother dealer. So if you go to brothersews.com, you can then type in your zip code and get it. 
So Joanne's telling me here that there is a glitch on the brother site right now. So hopefully you'll, if you're watching on the brother site, you'll be redirected. Uh, you know, once again, everybody's on their fa on Facebook and on, so, uh, excuse me, on online trainings and everybody's watching TV. So, you know, they're saying things can get glitchy. Yes, Jennifer, there are more videos on BES4 that are on my Facebook page. I've been doing a Facebook live here since the beginning of March. So uh, every Tuesday I've been doing a Facebook live, except for a couple that I had family emergencies for. So you can go back and watch all of those there on my Facebook page. Um, Tammy, if you have other questions about the power packs, if you want to contact me directly via messenger, I can kind of explain a little bit more to kind of understand what you're asking me, what it will do for you. Um, the main thing is that it would bring in the SVG files instead of making you run this, run an SVG through a different piece of software, you could bring it directly in. Now, one other thing that I want to show you before we go on with this is, Another little trick that came, I do believe this was Power Pack 2. If I choose import and I choose import artwork, you can select the font style that you want to go with. These are any true type fonts that are on your computer. I could do this in another manner as well, but this is an easy way to do this. I have some monogram frames that are kind of fun. I'm going to select one of those and let's see what I get and say, okay. So here is my monogram frame and it's an artwork piece of artwork. If I want that to be turned in to a, an embroidery design for a background, I can convert that to runs now. And then I could do the exact thing, same thing that we've been doing is go in there, arrange, arrange on rows, pick how many rows you want across and how many you want down, click OK, and you've got it. You could do that with a letter as well. And that, I mean, it'll just basically create that artwork for you and basically create you a decorative field. But, oh gosh, guys, isn't that cute? Wouldn't that be cute to put little um, designs in to base to make a pillow out of that's something that I hadn't really thought about but that is stinking cute you could go in there let me turn off the stitch view turn off stitch points you could go in there and add in a little accent design in each of those put in a little saying or something, and that'd be kind of a great fun little thing to do. I think that would be a blast. All right, I'm gonna answer questions and then we are going to call it a day today. I am not doing a Facebook Live next week because I will be on the road traveling to my father's. Um, so if you, there's a question that I haven't answered, let's do that now. I am, let's see here. So I am, uh, yeah, I'll be on the road next week down at Dad's. Power Pack 1 is not included with the Dream, Dream Edition um, by itself. It is an add-on. You can add it to be, think of BES4 as the mothership. If there's things, that we have three different Power Packs that you can add to it to add features to it. The first Power Pack is just called Power Pack, and it added more embroidery features. It gave you the capability of, Saving a design out for the jumbo hoop. It gave you the capability of bringing in SVG files, um, convert to decorative fills, convert to runs. Everybody has convert to appliques, regardless of which, regardless of whether you just have the BES4 or if you have power packs added on you, everybody gets convert to appliques. Um, power pack two, and, and there's some more features in there. Those are my big ones that I like about power pack one. Power pack two is generally about artwork to use with a scan and cut machine. It gave you the capability of tracing an image to turn it into artwork to cut with this cutting machine. It gave you the capability of creating um, rhinestones. It gave you the capability of merging embroidery with rhinestones. Um, 
but having having that feature and having the other power packs it gives once you can create artwork you can create your own appliques and you can create your own embroidery designs from decorative fills if you have power pack two they are a la carte gang you don't have to have one to get two you don't have to have two to get three you can buy which ones you whichever ones you want power pack three is templates and that is if you go back to last week's facebook live you'll see i explained templates quite intensively last week we went through bringing one in adjusting it sending it out um and it's those are some quick and easy nice fun designs to be able to use especially if you're doing things for multiple people it's more of a i don't have to think about it i can basically get things going so does that stitch as a continuous design no that is not going to stitch as a continuous design to make it do that, I would need to adjust its starts and stop points. And it's possible to do that in the software. I just didn't take you into that today. So um, any other questions, guys? Uh, if there's something that you're dying to see today, I will be happy to show you that. But I am kind of a little brain dead today. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, what I thought would take longer to show you didn't take as long. but. I can obviously show you one more thing. Let me try one more thing here. Because we brought in that, I, I brought that in as true type font. So let me get back over to my screen. I'm going to choose import, import artwork. And this time we'll do a T. I'm going to show my Tennessee roots here. And you can pick whichever font you want on your computer. So if you've got a pretty T, I, you know, I have no idea what mine's going to turn out looking like. We're just going to say, okay, there we go. If you want to do this, this is a power pack two feature. So when you go to your cutting mat, let's say you wanted to have an entire background of T's and you didn't want them as, you didn't want them as stitches. You want them as artwork. So, you can do the same thing. You can basically put these on rows and you can make your own decorative background for, um, what would that be? Adhesive vinyl or um, heat transfer vinyl, either one. So you can make your own designs up that way. You can also convert those to runs. That's going to be a, a different looking one because it's going to be an outline. You would need something very narrow if you wanted it to be just a straight running line. You can see where it's going to jump. So if you wanted to make a dip change to that, that's where it would do jump stitches. All right. So how about we do the next time, let me come back up here. When you send layers to the scan and cup, it's not grouped. Do I know why? Unfortunately, yes, I do know why. Because the scan and cut is not set hanging in, hanging onto the coating for the grouping that you've done in BES4. So the first thing I do when I land that onto my scan and cut is I go select all on my edit screen and group it before I touch anything else. Timothy, you have a 625 with a four inch hoop. No, the program will not split the designs. It does not have that capability to do that for you. The only thing it will split for is the jumbo hoop. So Stacy, I'm glad that you're in, or Stacia, I'm glad that you're enjoying the shows, that you're enjoying the lives. I have enjoyed doing them for you. Um, it's always a treat. It's you all are making me expand my capabilities and think of different things that I can do with this software besides what I would do on a normal day to day basis. I do love the BES4 software because it gives me so much capability. Um, one thing that I will show you guys that just before I forget it, I keep saying that I, you would think I would shut up here in a little bit, but no. So you have this thing called add notes, which is a really cool little feature especially if you're doing, oops, hello. Especially if you're doing multiples for people, you can come in and add any specialty notes for things that you want to do. So if you know that you did a design 
with certain colors and you, or you want to remember which decorative fill it is, you can come in here and type in notes for yourself. And those basically save, oh, they'll show as embroidery blue, but it's not going to stitch. And you can change them, you can hide them. If you print out your template, you can print your templates out with them or without your notes, either way. So that's one of the things that you, you'll have fun with. I think that that's a very helpful little tool. So let me come back over here before I forget. Now let's see here. Um, do I cover any of the power packs in my book? I cover power pack one in my book, the Facebook live group. Any questions you have on the other packs, I'm very, help, very happy to answer those for you in my Facebook private group. That is only for people who have my workbook. Please don't ask to join it if you don't, because you won't, you'll be lost. It's to help people go, walk, follow through that. It's kind of a, it was my trial Facebook group. How's that? It was, they were my test subjects to see if I could figure out how to do this um, and how, how well I would do with it. So uh, I have changed my camera location today and I'm not really liking that. I got a new um, tripod. I got to, I've got to adjust that. It's, it's down a little low for me. So Sue, I'm glad you're liking the software and that you're finding that these are helpful. Is there a difference between using BES4 versus the rhinestone kit? Do you need the rhinestone kit if you have BES4? Okay. Um, you don't need to have both. They are actually, Sometimes it does better in the rhinestone kit on B, in Canvas Workspace, and sometimes it does better on BES4. What I like about having rhinestones on BES4 is that it gives me the capability of combining the rhinestones with my embroidery. And I can see it all on one screen, and I know that it's going to match. I do not have that capability with the rhinestone kit on Canvas Workspace. The rhinestone kit on Canvas Workspace will sometimes convert shapes a little bit better to rhinestones than the one in BES4. So it's just, you know, it, it depends on what you plan on doing with your rhinestones. I personally like having it both places, but it's, uh, you know, that's, that's up to you. Um, Stephanie, no, BES4 is not a digitizing program. It will let me create appliques and some things with decorative fills, but it is not a traditional um, digitizing program. So it's not going to give you all of the fill stitches that you're used to. That would be the Brother P Design 11 software. <clears throat> um, the candy, the cutting mat comes in with Power Pack 2. So you get to choose and it's not just the brother mats are not the only ones that are there. You have the roll feeder. You also have silhouettes and I believe cricket mats in there. Hold on and we'll go look and see. Um, oh, hit the wrong button. Gotta come to my screen. Where's my mouse? Over in your properties window, since that's the only thing on here, these are the mats that are available in the software. So you can see all of the different mats. Um, we save out as SVG. So it will you can export any design that you create in here as an SVG file, regardless of what, whether you have a power pack or not. If you basically added it, let's say we did an applique design just for the heck of it, let's just do one here. What do we got? So let's say we want to send that. We're going to hit tools tab and scan and cut. Now we have our shapes. Normally you would export an FCM for the brother cutting machines. If you have a different cutting machine, you would go export, export SVG. Okay. That will give you the capability of using it with any other cutting machine that's out there. SVG is pretty much our, the universal language. All right. Let's see what we've got. Any last questions here, guys? Not my best, but hopefully you all learned something today. We had a few little technical glitches. Um, I enjoyed you. I've enjoyed working with you guys this week.
thank you all for joining me. If there's any questions between now and then, please feel free to put them here and I will see if I can't answer them. If it's something that requires a, a live demonstration on it, we will certainly add it to the next show. Next week will not be one. As I said, I will be on the road. So um, I'm going to my dad's. I will not be out there. Uh, but the next week I will do one, another show. So haven't decided what that one's on. We'll see what brother's theme is that week. See if we can add to it and make it this match up. If not, I'll come up with something else. So I always look at your comments to be able to see if there's questions that you have that I haven't answered. So please be sure and stick some comments out there. It was great to see you all. And thanks, Karen, for sending kisses to my dad's hugs too. Um, hugs back to you. Tell Bob I said hi. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye. Uh,